Hi there everyone, we're at the Royal Society Archives with head librarian Keith Moore and today we're going to be looking at photos and notepads and all sorts of goodies here to do with cloud chambers. So this is a cloud of gas and you can use the gas to detect particles travelling through because they form like a, a condensation trail. Now the man who invented cloud chambers was Charles Thompson Reese Wilson. He won the Nobel Prize for it in 1926, so not bad going. So he's in Cambridge in the 1890s. He's very interested in meteorological phenomena. He goes walking, he climbs Ben Nevis, he sees atmospheric effects and clouds and mists up there, and he wants to recreate it in the laboratory. By about 1909, 1910, he's got a working cloud chamber. And yes, you can use this to detect cosmic rays. So here, we here we've got C.T.R. Wilson's notebooks. So this is the Nobel Prize in the making. That's right. And you can see the title of the notebooks is sellotaped onto the front here. Very bad for archives. Condensation and tracks. What you get in these things are Wilson's working notes. It's so exciting, isn't it? Seeing like when these things don't yet exist and they're thinking about it and making things and making sketches. This is just the period when J.J. Thompson's at the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge, a man who discovered the electron, of course. So Wilson's really in on the ground floor of what we would now call particle physics. Let's have a look at a couple more notebooks mm. before we move on. You can see hail and thunderstorms. He's looking at meteorology here. He'll eventually take that to create an artificial storm of a kind in the lab. Ah, here we are, condensation experiments. So this looks like solid cloud chamber material. You know, his diagrams, they're not amazing. They're not the best ones I've seen. It gives me hope. They're not for publication, therefore yeah. they're not fancy drawings in any way. He did win a Nobel Prize, so... Yeah. He did, yes. Yeah. So he's, that's not bad. <laughs> yeah. So, so far we've seen the, the notebooks, but what we haven't seen is a cloud chamber or what you can see through uh, within the cloud chamber. So I think we should have a look at a slightly later physicist's okay. papers. So we're jumping forward in time now. Very slightly, yes. So, so the cloud chamber's been invented and now mm -hmm. it's become a tool of the trade. Exactly right. So this is your high-tech particle physics kit of the 1920s and 30s. So, so think CERN, but in a little vessel. Okay, <laughs> tabletop CERN. Exactly. So whose materials are we looking at here? This is a scientist called Patrick Blackett, later Lord Blackett and President of the Royal Society in the 1960s. He didn't get a Nobel Prize. I think he did, yes. Did he? And, yeah, and he got to be President of the Royal Society, so not bad going, double hit. His field was cosmic ray research. He took lots and lots of images using a cloud chamber. So these are pretty typical pictures you'll see looking down at a cloud chamber and the particles zooming yeah. off in different directions. Something will decay into two particles and split in two and go off like this and we see it. Well that's right, so the cloud chamber contains high saturation of water vapour and when a particle goes through it will condense a track. And Patrick Blackett took really classic images of some of these phenomena and they were used in science textbooks for years. Oh they're beautiful aren't they? Lots of tracks here. But you can see the behaviour of the particles. Sometimes you can see them, as you say, going off in different directions. So these are particles that you can't see, but they leave behind these telltale... You can't, that's right, you can't see the particles, but you can see where they've been. This one even has a caption on it here. It says, showing a single cosmic ray particle of fairly high energy. Two electrons of half and one MeV, apparently ejected by a gamma ray from a nucleus. So we've got the cosmic ray and then the two electrons and the gamma ray nucleus, okay. And the second picture seems to have fallen off. Look at that, there's some of these, got some of the nicer ones there on a card for us. So in this period of time, this is where all the big discoveries were happening, isn't it? This was like, this was That's the thing. Right. Keith, I think these would look really nice blown up on the wall at home. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think they're pretty good. You know, there are some pieces of science that do kind of verge onto art quite accidentally, but there are lovely things. So which one are you going to have blown up on your wall? I haven't decided yet. I'd like, <laughs> it, to, I'd like it to be one that's sort of, you know, some significant... Look at that. That's a Jackson Pollock. It is. That's what I was just thinking. It looks like a Jackson Pollock piece. It's a blackout, an early blackout. It's an early blackout, yes. Mm. But what we haven't found yet is an image of a, of a cloud chamber. And I'm, I'm sure, sure we've seen one in here, so... Uh, we'll find it. We'll find it. Keep filming, James. I like this one. This one's like from all the little negatives. Yeah. Oh, there we go. You got it, have you? Anderson's discovery of the positive electron. This is a big deal. This is yeah. the positron. Yeah. And this is the discovery. 
just tossing it aside like it's nothing. Well, I got, I got so excited because I saw the equipment. Here, okay. You know? <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, this is apparatus used by Blackett. So here's the apparatus. This is all being done with. This is the cloud chamber. And it just looks so homemade, doesn't it? it Which, does. it, of course, it was. Well, yeah, you couldn't buy these off the shelf. Yeah, fabulous. I like that. I'd, mm. I'd, I'd have that up on the wall, I think. You'd put that on the wall. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. If the pointy end is down, you're good to go. Now, I hold pens in a rather <laughs> unusual way, so I'm going to try to... Well, this will be an experiment. This is good. It is the Royal Society. <laughs> like that? Yeah. Is that too much? That's fine. No, that's fine. So you need to turn it... Yeah, here we go. It's working. I'm using my all capitals writing here. <laughs> Come on, Brady, and you're on five. <laughs> No, that's one of the ways that I write. Oh, right, okay. That's not bad. 